On termine avec une cabale très féroce contre un claviériste du nom de Wim Winters qui a eu le malheur bah, justement d'y mettre un grain de sel et de se poser la question de savoir s'il ne fallait pas jouer Beethoven deux fois moins vite. C'est la théorie de la double beat, la pulsation double. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever tried to play at this speed And no, this is not me after taking some pills. I simply sped up this recording. And why did I do this? Well, according to musicologists and a lot of musicians with authority, I would say, this is how they want us to believe that beginners at Beethoven's time played the piano. You all know the obvious solution to this enigma, right? That's the WBMP, the whole beat metronome practice. And if you've never heard about the WBMP, you must be new to this channel. So welcome here. Let's introduce myself. My name is Wim Winters. I play the organ, the clever chord, the pianoforte. We do a lot of fascinating research here on this channel just to figure out how the music could have sounded in the head of the composer. Therefore, we introduced the WBMP, the whole beat metronome principle. In that way, a metronome is not read as we do it today, by counting every click, but by counting every other click, very much like physicists still do today. Six, seven, eight, nine. And so when Czerny marked that etude with a metronome mark, he didn't mean this, but he had this in mind. Sometimes I wonder why it is so difficult for so many musicians and musicologists to just see what is in front of us. But on the other hand, there are more and more signals that I receive that our research is making an impact. As for instance recently on Radio France, which is the national French radio, in which in a six minute program my name was mentioned, our research was mentioned, and not even in a negative way. I would say even very neutral to very positive as an alternative option. But the last word in this radio program was given to the modern pianist who wanted to prove single beat right. So they served an anonymous pianist who played a Czerny etude very fast, but they all missed something a very important something and I will tell you later exactly what. So welcome to another Tempo Reality Check. So why are metronome marks important? Well, tempo is important. The choice of tempo determines all aspects of a performance. That's why so many composers in the 19th century, starting with Beethoven, embraced the metronome. So they gave a lot of metronome marks. Metronome marks that are part of the score, but today rarely, if ever, are taken into consideration of an interpretation. And so I was very happy to hear that the French musicologist Emmanuel Reibel, who was actually participating in this program, shared exactly the same view. Let's listen. Le métronome a-t-il raison bah, D'après Emmanuel Rebel, c'est là où se situe toute la noblesse du métier de l'interprète qui doit tout interpréter, y compris les indications métronomiques. But there is always this little caveat, this little but, you know, in our still very much single beat directed understanding of historical metronome marks, one can take metronome marks seriously, but in that perspective, from that perspective, there always has to be a little way out, you know, and it's also present in this program. So right after acknowledging that the metronome marks are part of the score, that you should play them, that you should interpret them because they are part of what the composer wants, Actually, this statement is made. Le tempo noté par un compositeur sur sa table ne sera pas le même que celui qu'il prendra lui-même au piano ou à la baguette. L'indication métronomique 
est à prendre avec un grain de sel en fonction de l'instrument et de la salle. Chopin lui-même a fini par supprimer de ses partitions hein, ses indications métronomiques. Oui, bien sûr, le hall, le room, l'instrument, tout peut influencer influence the tempo. Mais ça ne veut pas dire que cette métronome ne peut ou ne peut pas être prise avec un grain de sel. Parce que quand vous dites ça comme musicologiste, vous donnez aux musiciens une raison de ne pas suivre cette métronome. Donc, en d'autres mots, first make sure that what the composer had in mind you are able to reproduce and then when you are in the largest cathedral in France by all means you play a little bit slower but not as an excuse for not reaching that tempo in single beat. Also the fact that Chopin would have removed metronomarchs from his score, there is no evidence for that, but even there, it's not important. He did once in his life, at the minimum, mark his scores, mark his etudes and so many other pieces with a certain tempo that he had in mind at the very minimum at that moment. All the additions that are made in the 19th century, they never complained about these tempi to be too fast. That only happens in our time. Also, that doesn't make really sense, right? And then the magic happens. Here comes a fragment in which our work is mentioned. So sit back, listen and smile, because guys, it is our work. You are part of this. I would never have been able to pursue this idea of spreading the message of Holbeat, of writing a book right now, actually finishing a book that will be almost 700 pages and we will publish it this year. We're working like crazy on that, but I would never be able, I would never have the courage, I would never have had the energy to do that if it wasn't for you here as a subscriber, as a listener, as a viewer here on this channel of Authentic Sound. So what you're about to hear now, it is a little bit of a milestone and it's also thanks to you so again lean back listen enjoy and smile and be a little bit proud also on yourself. On termine avec une cabale très féroce contre un claviériste du nom de Wim Winters qui a eu le malheur bah, justement d'y mettre un grain de sel et de se poser la question de savoir s'il ne fallait pas jouer Beethoven deux fois moins vite c'est la théorie de la double beat la pulsation double. Elle est elle-même issue de, de théoriciens, de musicologues qui, dans les années 80, ont mis au jour cette complexité possible de, de lecture de, et d'utilisation surtout du métronome. Ça vient en fait en, aussi en partie du fait que Beethoven a indiqué pour ses partitions des tempi très élevés, comme la fameuse sonate Hammer Clavier pour piano, notée blanche égale 138 pour le premier mouvement, ce qui est évidemment très très rapide. Et d'où l'hypothèse selon laquelle on aurait compté différemment euh, dans les tout débuts euh, de l'époque métronomique. Euh, en gros, on n'aurait pas compté 1, 2, 3, 4 à chaque coup du métronome, mais on aurait compté 1 et 2 et euh, en souvenir de l'ancienne utilisation des pendules euh, où euh, en fait on était attentif à un aller-retour du de, de, dans l'oscillation du pendule et pas simplement à, à chacun des battements du pendule. I have to say, I am really pleased with the way they brought this idea of the WBMP. The way it's summarized, it's actually correct. There are some details we can discuss, but that's not important. And so, regardless of all the details, we have to celebrate this. But of course, I can understand that Persons who make these radio programs should like find a little bit of balance and they give the last word to an anonymous pianist. I don't know if they asked him or her to perform something. I don't know if they know somebody, but there is a recording featured in at the end of this program that at least gives the impression of challenging the idea of the WBMP from the perspective that these pieces in single beat would be too fast to play, generally. And they pick a Czerny etude. And if you listen to that fragment, it's only a short fragment, it's surprisingly fast. I have to say, it's one of the fastest performances on piano that I know. The player here reaches an a speed, a number of notes per second that is unmatched. And so there is a little suspicion Also, if you listen to the sound, it's easy to, spit, to digitally sped up, but it's not so easy to keep the quality of the sound. So the sound of the piano is a little bit plasticky, a little bit like mm, too dry, in my opinion, to be true. But regardless, there is something more important than that. 
But first, let's listen to this fragment. Un des arguments de Wim Winters étant de dire les indications métronomiques sont trop rapides, il faut forcément jouer deux fois plus lentement, eh bien les internautes pianistes sont empressés de lui prouver que si, si, c'est jouable, tendez l'oreille. Moi, je dis que vous avez parlé deux fois trop vite aujourd'hui. <laughs> so, if we check the tempo of this recording, it's about 140 half notes, which is again one of the fastest, if not the fastest recording. To just give you a comparison, Lang Lang plays on his CD on Deutsche Grammophon the first etude of the same bundle. He plays a C major, which is easier than this one, in a tempo of about half note 88, which is considerably slower. Don't make the mistake to just compare 88 with 100, that's just a tiny bit faster. Lang Lang already there, it's with like about 12 notes a second at the top of his abilities. And it's not surprisingly, this is really, really, really fast. 12 notes per second, just try that for yourself. There's also this fantastic video of Joss Wright. I guess you know him, where he demonstrates his maximum speed in scales, 12.4 notes per second. And he goes a little bit beyond that. It's not his fingers who stop playing, it's his brain. We have to still be able to process the notes. And at 12.4 notes a second, what Joss Wright is demonstrating there, there is just so much buffer. It's like your RIM memory. I don't know in English how it's called. It's like your internal computer memory. When it's full, it's full. And you have to refresh and then you can go further. That's what happens with the human brain. Even in simple scales, at around 12.5, we stop functioning in some way. We can go a little bit faster with very short runs, but that's it. And so therefore my suspicion a little bit in this recording that plays at a tempo of around half note 100, like 9800, those are 30 notes per second constantly. But now the bad news is about to arrive. In spite of everything that I've just said, it's too slow. Journey doesn't mark this etude with half note 898 or 100, but he marks the etude with half note 108, which is 10% faster on top of what is already the fastest performance that I know. So Karl Czerny doesn't want us to play 30 notes per second, he wants us to play 14.4 notes per second. Just imagine 14.4 notes per second. Those are a lot of notes per second. And if it's not bad enough, in the 19th century, teachers and institutes alike used the Opus 299 by Czerny really a lot. And so oftentimes you find these overviews in which they label the level, so to say, of the Opus 299 and book one, which is etude number one till ten, is marked always to be for beginners. So are we supposed to believe that what you just heard is what beginners in Beethoven's time just simply could do because they had 40 pianos that played lighter? I don't think so. It's a little bit of a pity that the people who made that fantastic program on National Radio France didn't check the recording, didn't check the tempo. They were probably overwhelmed with the speed and they just thought, as many of you might think, like when listening to very fast performances, that they meet single beat, but oftentimes that's not the case. But I'm not here to complain. It was a fantastic moment when I received a message from one of my Patreons with this link leading to that program. I smiled and I hope you smile as well. Having our research, the WBMP, the option mentioned on national radio in France as an option, in a neutral way, like I said, it's just a milestone we should celebrate. Another milestone is the upcoming release of our Beethoven symphonies. I'm recording this half of March 2024 and the release of the nine symphonies played in whole beat in the beautiful, phenomenal transcription made by Karl Czerny for piano forehands is planned for half April 
end of April. This is something you don't want to miss. We went even crazy in creating a full Beethoven experience package with 26 hours of podcast talking about it. like a listening guide to these symphonies in whole beat. I will make a premium course on notation to learn to understand why Beethoven gave that tempo with this notation and so much more. There is a link in the description box. Thank you for checking it out. Also, thank you for watching. We see each other very soon again. Bye.